What's up guys, Mike from Rockville, and today we are going to be talking about how to set up your RockMix 2 two-channel mixer with a USB interface. Let's get to it. So straight out of the box, you basically get three things. You get the mixer itself, you get the charging block, and you get the USB cable that you can use to connect it to the wall to charge it, or to connect to your computer to use it as an interface. I'm going to take this end, the male end for now, plug it into the charging block, plug the charging block into my wall outlet, then take this end, and on the back over here, you can see there's one place where it can connect. I'm gonna basically just plug it straight in, and we get power right away on our mixer. So the best way for me to demonstrate a couple different scenarios and how you can use this mixer is to hook it up to speakers so you can hear everything that's coming through it. So what I have here is the HD5 speakers that we sell. They're usually used as computer speakers or bookshelf speakers. And what I'm going to do is from the RCA output over here, I'm going to connect it into the input over here. Now the cable I'll be using to do that is going to be an RCA to 3.5 millimeter aux cable. So I'm gonna plug in the RCA cable right over here, this is my output. And then I'm gonna take this end, the 3.5 millimeter, and on the back of the HD5, I'm gonna plug it into the AUX1 input port. Now you might not have this specific speaker set up, but the process is always gonna be the same. From the output, you're going to go into the input of your speaker. And you can use an RCA to 3.5 millimeter cable, or you can use an RCA to RCA cable. It just depends on what your speakers accept. Now that we're plugged into our speakers, we can use channels of one and two for either a mic or line level signal. I'm gonna show you with the mic just so you can hear everything that's coming through. So I have a dynamic microphone here. It's the RMC SR microphone. And I have a female XLR going into the bottom of the mic. And the male XLR, what I'm gonna do is go into our combo jack on channel one. Now the way that the combo jacks work are when you're using the XLR portion, it's going to transmit a microphone level signal to your speakers. And when you use the quarter inch portion, it's going to transfer a line level signal. So that's kind of how it signifies. Quarter inch is for line level signals, XLR is for microphone signals. So if you want to use a microphone on channel one, you're going to want to make sure to use a pure XLR to XLR cable. I'm going to go ahead and turn on the microphone. And when I talk into the microphone, you can hear me coming through the speakers. I can go up on the speakers a little bit. I can also go up on the main mix, which is going to raise the volume of the overall mixer. So right away on channel one, you'll notice there is our gain knob, so that's going to increase the level of my voice coming into the mixer. And at the bottom, there's also a volume knob, which is going to set the volume of channel one in the main mix. So these two knobs are a little different. This one just sets the amount of gain coming in. This one sets the gain going to the main mix. So just keep that in mind when you're setting the levels of your microphone or line level signal. Now under that, we have a two band EQ with a low boost or low cut, so I can boost the low end, whoa. Or I could cut it to make it a little more high frequency. And I can do the same thing with the high band frequencies. I can boost the high frequencies, it's sharp, or I can cut them for a more a little bit of a tame sound. And then right next to that, we have a pan fader, which is going to either shift my voice to the left or shift it to the right. I guess for you guys, it's to the left or to the right. Doesn't matter, what it's gonna do is go to the left speaker or it's gonna go to the right speaker. And you can actually hear as I'm talking, I am shifting from speaker to speaker. And that's basically gonna let you put the signal either to the left or right or directly in the middle, which is where it is set to begin with. So now channel two is almost identical to channel one in that it has a combo jack with the same features, the XLR is for a microphone level signal, the quarter inch is for a line level signal, but we added a really cool feature. So you can actually plug in a guitar or bass into this quarter inch input and then select input, you push this button down, and then you can play a guitar through it. Let me show you how that works. So I have a guitar here. I have a quarter inch plugged into this end. I can take this end. I can plug it right in, push this button in, turn up the volume on my guitar, set this level, and you can hear the guitar coming through the speakers. Sounds really good. So this is really cool because I can have a guitar on this channel and I can have my voice in the second channel, so if I'm recording a guitar and a vocalist track, I can do it all at once. And channel two also has the same two band EQ where you can boost the low end or cut the low end or raise the high end or cut the high end. And then it also has that pan fader where you can shift it to the left or to the right. 
Now, a little different from channel one is we got rid of this gain knob and we basically have two settings. We have a high gain setting and a low gain setting. And depending on what you're inputting in, it's just gonna give you that flexibility to either boost the signal or lower it a little bit. Right at the end of channel two, we have our volume knob, which is gonna control the level of channel two in the main mix. So both channels one and two are going to the main mix. And depending on where you set this knob over here, it's going to determine how loud it is in the main mix. Now, a really popular use for this mixer is for podcasting. Because it has that USB interface, you could go right into a laptop or a DAW and record everything. And so we did not miss anything with this mixer. So now in my hand, I have a dynamic microphone, but there is another style of microphone known as the condenser microphone. Now, condenser microphones have a higher sensitivity and they're a little more detail oriented in what they can pick up. And because of that, it requires a little bit more power known as phantom power, which is 48 volts. So we actually have a phantom power button over here. So let me show you how that works. So I'm going to take a new cable, an XLR cable, and I'm going to plug it into channel two. Then I'm gonna plug this into the microphone. You'll notice, even though I'm plugged in and going directly into channel two, I'm talking into it and you're not hearing anything. That's because this condenser microphone requires phantom power. So make sure you press in this phantom power button over here. We're just gonna illuminate the 48 volts of phantom power. And now when I talk through it, you can hear me coming through clearly. That sounds really nice and crisp, but don't forget, if you're ever using a condenser microphone, think about using a pop filter to really block out those plosives. So right now, I actually have two microphones set up, one condenser microphone and one dynamic microphone, which already shows you that this is a perfect mixer for a two-person podcast. But if you'll draw your eyes over here, there is another eighth-inch microphone input, and it says mic to channel one. Now, what this microphone input does is it allows me to add a third microphone so that I could technically have a three-person podcast. All I need is an XLR to eight-inch cable. So I actually have that on one of my mics over here, so I'm gonna go ahead and plug that in. So the female end of the XLR cable goes into the microphone, and the eight-inch end is then gonna go into our mic to channel one input. So now that I'm plugged in, you can actually hear me coming through the speakers, and that's all being controlled through the channel one settings. And so now technically I have two microphones on channel one. Testing, testing. Testing, testing. And what this allows me to do is have a three person podcast all off of the Rock Mix 2, which is really great. The one thing you have to note is this is only going to work for dynamic microphones. This will not work for condenser microphones, this input over here, because there is no phantom power being supplied to that input. But that doesn't limit you, because as you can see, I have three microphones, two are dynamic and one is a condenser microphone. So this is still a great option for a three-person podcast. Now, if you're using this mixer for podcasting, one of the most important things you need is headphones because you don't want your speakers to be outputting the sound coming out of your mouth into your microphone because you'll get a feedback loop. So right over here, you'll notice a headphone jack, which I can use to plug my headphones directly into. And this is actually gonna pick up everything that is coming through. Yeah, everything that's coming through the mixer, I'll be able to monitor. And I can control that level with this knob over here. Now you're probably thinking, if I have a two-person podcast mic, how are both people going to be able to hear what is coming through? Well, we have a solution for that. We sell a cable called the RC135 TRS. It looks like this. And basically this end plugs in directly here and then you would plug in two of your headphones into these jacks over here, and then both people will be able to hear whatever is coming through the mixer, controlling the level with this knob over here. And if you need an even bigger setup, we do make a headphone amp that you can purchase, and that's for four or eight people. The last thing I wanna to talk to you about though is how do you interface with your computer? Cause that's one of the biggest questions we get asked about the Rock Mix 2. And it's very simple to do, let me show you how to do it now. So I have my computer right here. I am using a Mac computer, but if you're using a PC, the steps are exactly the same, so don't worry. I have this program opened up called GarageBand. GarageBand is just a digital audio workstation, which is something that you need in order to get the sound recording off of your mixer into your computer. GarageBand is free for all Mac users. Another great app for PC users is Audacity, which is a free source. And the steps that I'm explaining right now are exactly the same, so don't fret. The first thing we need to do to connect this into the computer, we're gonna take our USB cord and take it out of the wall. And now this USB end, we're gonna plug right into the USB port. 
on our computer. You can see that my computer is already recognizing it. It just went through the step where it recognized the mixer right away. So on my Mac, I didn't have to change anything. It'll recognize it automatically. But in the PC, if it doesn't recognize it right away, it's okay. You're just gonna go into your digital audio workstation like Audacity and go to the input selector and you're gonna change it to USB codec, which is what the Rock Mix 2 will show up as. Now, if you're actually looking at my PC, it's actually picking up my voice probably from this microphone. Yeah, it's picking it up from this microphone really well. It's probably gonna pick up from this microphone too. Yeah, it's picking it up. Now, one thing you do wanna keep in mind is the Rock Mix 2 is actually outputting a two-channel source into your digital audio workstation. That might sound technical, but all I mean is it's recording two tracks at the same time, a left and a right track, our stereo track. So you can't just have one channel recording in your digital audio workstation because that'll only catch a little bit of the sound. So what you need to do is create two tracks and we're going to change it from input one to input two. That's gonna be our left channel. So audio one is gonna be set to my left channel and audio two is gonna be input two, which is gonna be my right channel. So now when I record, it's going to actually capture everything coming through the mixer, including my panning and my different volume selections for each channel. And then remember, before you hit record, if you're about to talk into a microphone and you have studio monitors, put the volume all the way to zero or you're gonna get nasty feedback and no one wants to hear that in the recording. So once you set your monitors down to zero, you have your microphone, you have your headphones plugged in, you can press record and start record. Testing one, two, this is Mike from Rockville. Mike from Rockville. Now, really important to note is you're gonna wanna make sure that this main mix button is pushed in. Otherwise, it's not gonna pick up anything coming from the mixer into the computer. So if this button is pushed up, make sure you push it in. And if you ever feel like, whoa, it's picking up too hot of a signal, you can always turn down the main mix or boost the main mix if you feel like it's not hot enough. So hopefully you guys found this video helpful on how to set up your Rock Mix 2 two-channel USB interface recording mixer. But again, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to reach out to our customers customer support team through phone or email. As always guys, I'm Mike from Rockville. I'll see you next time.